Have you ever created a file on your computer that's empty, but then take a look at its contents and see that it has zero bytes and start to wonder to yourself, how could that possibly be? There's almost a bell curve-like understanding that people have with this concept. Those who are beginners with computers who might barely understand what a byte is will think, well, of course it's zero bytes in size, there's nothing in the file. Well, someone who is just slightly more knowledgeable, not an expert, but let's say above average, they might be baffled by this because, you know, of course there is all sorts of data that is associated with the file even though it contains no text. So obviously it has a name, it has a file type, it has a record of when it was created or last modified. It even has read and write permissions and group edit permissions that are assigned to it. So surely all of this data must take up at least some bytes somewhere. Uh, it certainly would if this was all typed into the body of this text file, but you know, somehow it's zero bytes, so that must be a lie. And to show that there's nothing funny that's going on with my system, uh, I can just create another file that has something in it. So this has data in it. We'll echo that out to something.txt. So now I've got these two files, and if I go into the properties, you see that this has 20 bytes of data. So what exactly is going on here? Both of these files have properties, as you saw, they have a file name, size, permissions, and whatnot, but those are all just attributes of the file. They don't actually affect the data that is inside of the file. Um, this is why, for example, I'll get the same hash of a file if I change its name. So I can run a SHA of something.txt, and so this is the hash of that file, and then I can change it. To something else so it's got a new name now s something and I get the same hash result same thing if I were to change the modification date by just like backspacing and then entering in the same character and then saving it's still going to have the same hash value uh, any of those file information data that you change is going to give it the same hash value now typically we would refer to this file information as metadata. And this metadata does take up some space on your system. So no, you can't just create like infinite data by just creating a bunch of empty files that have really long file names to describe something. Can't do that. Uh, now the storage of this metadata is handled differently depending on your file systems. So on ext file systems, for example, uh, including ext4, the metadata is stored on inodes, which are just data structures in Unix-like file systems that contain this file system information, as well as the disk block locations of the uh, objects of the data. So that means like the physical location of where your data would be stored on your SSD or on a hard disk uh, where the data is on whichever spinning platter. So whenever you first format your disk, a certain number of inodes are going to be created and you can specify this yourself. In fact, if we take a look at the man page of uh, mkfs.ext4, uh, so we can see all the options available to us that have to do with the inodes. Now, by default, the number of inodes created depends on the size of the disk. So ext4 by default is gonna make one inode for every 16 kilobytes of space when you format. Uh, and one of the potential downsides to ext4 and its earlier versions is that the number of inodes is fixed when you format the disk. So you might have to really think about this uh, when you format it, if you're going to wind up in a situation where you are gonna have like a lot of empty files or very small files for some reason that have like very large names. So they're gonna have a lot of metadata associated with them. Uh, because if that were to happen, uh, if that allocated space for the inodes fills up on your system, then it's going to report that your disk is full and it's gonna prevent you from creating any new files even though you actually do have space available. Uh, and a situation like that 
uh, would be like having a library, I guess, with shelves full of empty books. So you don't actually have any information in your library, but it's like your catalog is full. So you can't add anything new until you start getting rid of some of those empty books and then you can start putting books that actually have information in them. Uh, now, luckily, there are some newer file systems that handle this a little bit better. Uh, they still have to store that metadata somewhere though. So there's no voodoo magic that's going on here. Uh, but file systems like BTRFS and XFS are able to allocate inodes dynamically. So more can be created if you're trending towards that type of situation of high, uh, high file count and low file size, really low file size. And if you're ever wondering about how many inodes you have left on your system, you can always check that with the DF command and using the I switch. Uh, or we can do DFHI to make it a little bit more human readable. So we can see on uh, dev stb2 that I had 30 million inodes created when formatting. Currently I'm using uh, almost a hundred or almost a million rather, and I've got 29 million free. So that's 4% that's in use. And this might actually be uh, a little bit high for me because I think that uh, that disk is almost full, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so see, it's about 93% full, and yet we're only 4% full with inodes. So it might actually be a little bit more beneficial in my use case to have the number of inodes set even lower. Uh, this is just the defaults that Linux Mint uses, so it might be perfectly fine for regular users. Uh, I guess I probably have bigger files than most people do on average on my system. So there you go. Now you understand zero byte size files and why they're not really zero bytes, but why it just says that they're zero bytes. And you understand how the metadata is stored. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye now.